Well, good morning, church. Good morning. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Should we stand together? We're going to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. You came to set the captives free. You came to bring us liberty. You came to bring us liberty. My sin and my rejection made your blood and my acceptance. Now I'm alive to bring you praise. Come on, let's declare, yeah. When the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come on, church, let's declare, where the Spirit of the Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Every chain, every chain is broken through you, Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Whoa. Whoa. Your blood, your blood has covered every sin. Your grace empowers me to win. Your grace empowers me to win. My pain and my oppression made your blood and my Now I'm alive. Now I'm alive to bring you praise. Cause when the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And every chain, every chain is broken through you, Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Whoa. Whoa. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free to dance and sing. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free to shout it out. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free to dance and sing. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free to worship you. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come on, church, if you believe that, let's declare. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And every chain, and every chain is broken through you, Jesus. Where the Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And every chain, and every chain is broken through you, Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. The Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom, there is healing, there is joy.
coming on the clouds. It's coming on the clouds. Kings and kings will bow down. And every chain will break. And every chain will break. As broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord of our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. His roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Open up the gates. So open up the gates. Make way before the King of Peace. The God who comes to stay is sent to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion. The Lion. Judah, his roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Every knee will bow, and every tongue confess that You are Lord Jesus. Well, let's declare this together. Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. lift up our voices right now in worship to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. Worthy, worthy Lord, worthy of all prayers. Thank you, Jesus. 
Come on, let's say some words of praise to our God and thankfulness. Lord, we love you. We worship you in the house this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Every knee will bow before you. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know it's good to praise God. Whatever situation you're facing, as I look around this morning, God is interested in you. God cares about you. God knows you. God sees you here this morning. And it's good that we've come to worship God this morning. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Daniel, for that. You know, somebody might hear, hear might be feeling... I was listening to a song before we came out about God's love. Speaking to you guys online and guys in church as well, you might feel that you're not being cared for, you're not feeling loved. But look, God's love is great. The words of this song said that the love of God is greater far than any pen or tongue can tell. Whatever has been written down, God loves you. Jesus loves you this morning. He just loves you, he wants to wrap his arms around you and say, come home to me. The love of Jesus is greater far. Do you know also, I've got a word for you church here this morning and a word for you online as well, that what God has started, he will finish it. Now it might be healing that you're in, in the middle of being and receiving God's healing, but whatever he started, he will finish it and he will see it through. I say to you, do not lose faith, do not lose hope because God is with you. You know, we need to feed daily on the love of God. We need to feed daily on the love of God. Joseph Prince, I was reading, he says, live each day knowing that you are his beloved child with God's love, God's grace, God's perfect acceptance of unmerited favor towards you. God has a desire to bless you. God has a desire to finish what he started. Everyone say accepted. Accepted. We are accepted in God. We do not need to earn anything because God has paid the price on Calvary. I want to say to you as well, go and stand or stand in the strength of the Lord the finished work of salvation on the cross. You know, God had finished salvation. When Jesus died on Calvary's cross, he died for our sins. He died because he loved us so much that we would have eternal life. And you know, on the cross, he said, it is finished. Jesus finished the work when he died on the cross of Calvary. You know, there's a single word in Greek which means it's finished. And it's called tetestelai, tetestelai. And this is what probably Jesus cried from the cross. This is finished. It's in a perfect tense. It's a present tense and a tense to come. So it means that we can stand complete in him because Jesus has finished the work on Calvary. Nothing that we could do would ever attain or, or to pay for our sins. But Jesus has died for us, the perfect man. You know, I can imagine Jesus working in, in, uh, in his carpentry. He was taught carpentry. And he would be building something. He perhaps was building a plow. He was perhaps building something, a masterpiece. And he'd run and he'd say, Abba, Abba. And they'd say, Ted Tesla, it is finished. It is perfect. You know, they used to say as well, if you ever had a debt in the Bible times, when it was completely paid off, they would use this word again, to test a lie. It is finished. The debt is paid. Michael, I just believe that. I want to pray for you in the church this morning. I pray that you put your hand upon Michael. Let's all put our hands towards Michael if we're able to. Michael, to test a lie. It is finished. It is finished. The finished work of healing is upon you. 
God sees you this morning. He sees you sat there and he just wants to bless you. He wants to wrap his arms of love around you. By his stripes, Michael, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Tell, tell us die. Yes, it is finished. Jesus, we look for quick results for your healing. Jesus does not need our help. Sometimes we feel it feels like that we need to help Jesus do his work and people, but it is finished. Jesus has completed the work. Amen. Amen. You know, whatever we're facing this week, I don't know what you're facing this week, hospital appointments, doctor's appointments, but I want to say to you, there's another man that goes with you, and that is Jesus. Even if you don't know him, just call upon his name and you'll feel his presence. It is finished. To test lie. I remind you that we can do nothing in our own strength. We can trust upon the rock. There's a guy called Leonard Ravenhill said, the hardest thing I have to do is nail my reputation to the cross. That it's not of me. It's not of our works. We can put our trust on the rock. We used to sing a song not too long ago, but grounded firm and deep, we have an anchor that fix the soul. And when we put our anchor down in the rock of Christ Jesus, nothing can shake us. No bad news that comes our way. We can just relax in Jesus and know that he cares. I don't know what you're facing this morning, but I know how big my God is. Do you know, we need to learn to trust God in the, in the calm and then we'll trust him in the storm too trust. God has paid our trust at Calvary for the past, the present, and the future. We can be reassured that God will never let us down. He will never let us down. We can know this with insurance. He will never fail you. You may have been let down by people in the past, but God says to you, I will not fail you. We need to submit to the Lord. In Proverbs, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. I just want to say to you this morning, turn to God. Receive it. Accept it. And live in it. 1 Peter 5 verse 7 says, Cast all your care upon him, because he cares for you. We thank you for your presence, Jesus. Greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. So I just want to encourage you this morning. Bless you. God's presence is in this house as we carry on to worship God. Receive, receive, receive all that Jesus has for you. Amen. Nothing can 
Daniel sings the next song we'll just take the offering up this is a way that we um, show Jesus that we love him if you're new to us and, and you're here please don't uh, feel that you have to it's just what we like to do because Jesus says it in the Bible and he will bless you 10,000 we welcome you here this morning as well if you're new to the church we welcome you into the house so we'll just take the offering up now thank you the chasm that lay between us I hide the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the then through the darkness, your loving kindness So through the shadows of my soul The work is finished, the end is written Jesus Christ, my living
Who could imagine? Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages set down from glory to wear my sin and bear my the cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living Hallelujah. say to you this morning that if you're feeling in a hopeless situation that God is with you, God cares for you. In fact I dare say to you I need a, I need a touch from the Lord, I need a blessing if you want to raise your hand if you just need Jesus to move on you and into a situation 
I'm not even looking around to see. But God knows there is a living hope. We pray for people, Lord, in the church, people that are poorly, that are sick this morning. Betty, I name you by name. There's living hope that I know you know. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus. By his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we will be healed. Tell tell us die. It is finished. Jesus has finished the work at Calvary. Amen. Good that when we come to church, that we can come to church and we can come to receive something from God, to give something from God. But it's good that we can come and receive something from God. I pray that as we listen to God's word this morning, that we will receive something from God and take it away with us. There's quite a few people away, as you probably noticed, although we've still got good numbers in the house this morning, which is absolutely great. For you people that are away watching online, uh, you might have noticed that uh, Pastor Glenn's not here this morning. He's away, and we trust that that God is blessing him, and he will be blessing him, and they'll have a great time. God is good. We used to say, God is good, and all the time, God is good. I just want to thank the worship team for the way they've uh, ministered this morning, in particular Daniel, Pastor Daniel, who we've grown to love, and part of our family here, um, who gives such a lot. He does so well. In fact, let's give him an applause. He, he, he didn't ask me to say that, and he, he didn't need that, but uh, we just want to do it because we love him and have welcomed him into our family church this morning. So I pray as he comes to minister to us this morning, be ready to listen, because God has spoken to him. He's got something to say to the church this morning, and receive it. Welcome. Thank you so much, Paul, for that. Brilliant. Great to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. So good to be worshipping, praise God, hey? I love, um, I love it when we come together and when we lift up the name of Jesus and something happens. I don't know if you felt it this morning, but I felt it. I felt his presence. Yeah. You know, and I needed that this morning. You know, sometimes we can get so familiar with the move of God. Sometimes we get so complacent in our journey of faith. But this morning, I, I really felt like God was challenging us to go up a notch in our spiritual level. God was challenging us to, hey, come on. Let's move up. Um, I wasn't planning to uh, share this this morning, but I don't know if you noticed. And this is, this is the thing, you know, I did not, when I picked up them songs, I did not pick up the theme for it. But as we were singing, that word kept coming again and again. He breaks the chains. Amen. Jesus is able to break the chains. Sometimes, you know, we bind ourselves with um, s- some of the baggage of the past, and it's so hard for us to move forward, so far f- hard for us to actually let go of things that binds us. But I really do believe this morning, before we open up the Word of God, I, I really feel like we need to pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Paul, for you know, leading us wonderfully this morning. But before we go any further, I really sense the presence of God here right now. You know, so why don't we just close our eyes? And whatever your needs are this morning, I want to encourage you to bring them before God. And I want to ask Mark to come and pray for us, if that's all right. Mark, would you lead us into time of prayer, please? Yeah. And if you, if you get any Glory prophetic you. words, please. Praise you, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Father, we worship you. We adore mm-hmm. you this morning. Father, we pray that as we step into your presence that your blessings will just pour down upon our heads. Father, we reach out to you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Yes. And Father, it's just amazing that you just come to us. and You just want to pour those blessings out upon us. Father, we pray that as the word comes out now, Lord, from Daniel's mouth, we pray that it will be a word that just blesses us and that builds us up and encourages us and sends us out from this place with a new purpose with a new desire to show people that your ways are so much better than the ways of this world. Father, we thank you that you are the King of Kings. That, Father, we worship you. We worship you. And we pray that every moment of our day we will worship you more. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Come on. Praise God. So if you've got your Bibles with you, please turn with me to Galatians. Um, I've entitled my message, Faithful to the Gospel. But if you haven't got your Bibles with you, don't worry. The scripture's going to come on screen, all right? So no need to panic. So praise God. What we're going to do this morning is we're going to go from verse to verse, if that's all right. You know, I don't, um, I love preaching um, um, the word of God, but at the same time, sometimes I just love it when we just read the scriptures together. There's, I think there's something powerful when the body of Christ comes together, when they read out the scriptures together. So we're going to read this verse together. I don't know how that's going to work, but we're going to try to read it together. Amen. So just this verse, all right, just this two verses. So one, two, three. Paul, an apostle, sent not from man, not by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And to all the brothers and sisters with me to the churches in Galatia. Oh, that was beautiful. Well done, guys. That was beautiful. So just a little bit of context, all right? Galatia was a region in Central East um, Asia, Central Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey. And Paul established churches in Galatia, which, which composed primarily of Gentiles as well as Jewish believers. All right? and, and, and they received the gospel eagerly and they were running the good race. But along the journey, something happened. You see, something happened. When he left Galatia, he learned that some in the fellowship were trying to pursue these Gentile believers to adopt and adapt some Jewish principles in their worship. And this was causing a lot of confusion as well as trying to bring some form of division in their fellowship. You see, so put it, to put it in a simple manner, Paul is writing this letter to settle the dispute, to settle the confusion once and for all. So as we just read verse 1 and verse 2, you know, I love it. Paul starts by saying, Paul, an apostle. And when we, when we look at that word Paul in Greek, that word means little or humble. You see, I love that. Little or humble. And also when we look at that word apostle, which means um, apostolos, all right? And um, it means to be commissioned to represent. Being commissioned to represent. So what Paul is doing is, before Paul opens up his letter, he's bringing out his credentials. In other words, what he's saying is, I did not come to you. I have not come to you uh, with, with uh, human authority. I have not come to you because some man sent me. But I've come to you because God himself has appointed me, he's called me, he's commissioned me to bring this message to you. All right. So he starts by explaining where he stands. And he, st he states these three things. Firstly, he's stating his apostleship is authentic. His apostleship is authentic. He was called by God. He was commissioned by God as we consider his encounter when he's on his way to Damascus. He has this radical encounter with Jesus Christ that changes him and changes his life from inside out. And on his radical encounter, and, um, and when he has his radical encounter with Jesus, he becomes passionate. He becomes passionate about sharing the message of the gospel. He becomes passionate about helping individuals find their purpose in life. And when he's writing to the church in Galatia, he's saying, Here, my passion is this. I've been called and commissioned by God to help you in your journey. Therefore, my apostleship is authentic. And secondly, what he's saying is his message is authentic. His apostleship is authentic, but not only that, but his message is authentic. There was loads of heresies that were floating about in different areas in that time. And that's why Paul felt the urge to remind these believers that, listen, whatever you do, do not compromise with the message of the gospel. Whatever you do, walk in that conviction God has placed within you. And sometimes it's so easy for us to start compromising with things, ain't it? And that's why the message of the Lord is true to us today, this morning as well. We have to walk in the conviction that knowing that God has called us, he's appointed us to bring about change and transformation in our community for Jesus. His apostleship is authentic. His message is authentic. And thirdly, I love this. He's serious about the gospel. He's not playing about it. He's like, listen, if you do something wrong, I'll tell you. That's what he's saying. If I see you messing around in your journey, I'll pull you aside. I'll challenge you. I'll correct you. And I think we need that in our Christian journey, don't we? We need that in our, in our, in our fellowship with one another. I love to hang around with people who will challenge me. 
And most of the time it's the opposite, isn't it? We don't like to hang around with people who challenge us. But can I say this? Accountability, if we're looking for healthier accountability, healthy accountability consists of challenge and encouragement. Challenge as well as encouragement. We need the challenge, yes, but at the same time we need encouraging. So my challenge is this morning, where are you this morning in your journey with the Lord? And my encouragement is this, wherever you are, don't worry. Don't beat yourself up. God is good. He's gracious. He's compassionate. He's loving. He's patient. Amen? We keep messing up, but his grace keeps picking us up. Isn't that wonderful? We keep messing up. That's, that's our nature. We just keep doing it over and over again. But his, his character, he is love. He does not look at our mess and say, look at you, mess and failure. No, he looks at us and he says, listen, I know you're hurting. I know you're trying your hardest. I know you keep failing, but don't beat yourself up because I'm here for you and I will pick you up. Hey, let's continue on this journey. Let's continue on this journey. Amen. And I love the fact that after this quick introduction, he quickly points their attention to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Come on, church. He points their attention to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says, send not from man, not by man, but by Jesus and the God Father who raised him from the dead. That's the message of the gospel. We, we serve a risen Savior. We worship risen King and his name is Jesus. And I also love the fact that when he's writing this letter, he is not alone. He says, and all the brothers and sisters with me. He's not writing this alone. He says, all the brothers and sisters with me to the churches in Galatia. He understood the power of fellowship. He understood the power of fellowship. He understood the power of journeying together and walking together. You see, the Bible reminds us it's not good for a man to be alone. It's not good for a woman to be alone. They need friendships. They need companions. They need people in their lives, in their journey, who will encourage them. Who will encourage them, who will be there for them, who will be them with them. He's saying, I want to suggest to us four things why Christian fellowship is important. Why journeying together is important. First thing is this, fellowship makes us stronger. Amen. Iron sharpens iron. I love that verse from Proverbs. Fellowship makes us stronger. You see, my vision, my understanding, my, I can only push myself so much. But when I'm surrounded with people who will constantly push me, who will constantly encourage me, who will constantly say to me, listen, Daniel, you've got more in you than you think you have. I tell you, when I'm surrounded with lions, I feel like I'm a lion too. <laughs> Amen. And that's why, come on, church, we have to be intentional about who we journey with. We have to be intentional about our circles because our circle of friends will determine our future. And not only that, but it will also determine where we'll be in the few years' time. If we're constantly surrounding ourselves with negative noises, negative people, I'm afraid to tell you this, but you will end up negative. But if we constantly surround ourselves with challenging people, encouraging people, faith-filled people, even when I'm down, I feel like, oh, man, come on, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Job, you know, when we consider the account of Job, I love the fact that he had people around him when he was hurting, when he was broken. You know, he was really hurting, and we don't consider the fact that his friends actually took time to be with him for many days. We only consider the fact that they actually said lots of negative things to him. You know, but we don't consider the fact that there were people who were constantly giving up their time to be with him. They were good friends, but their advice wasn't so good, <laughs> right? And, and there's a difference between having friends and difference between having good, faith-filled, encouraging friends. It's not... The, um, it's, not, it's not the matter of quantity. It doesn't matter how many friends you have, how many companions you have, how many people you have around you. You can be in a room filled of people but still feel lonely. You can be in a room, filled, a room full of people but still feel like, hold on a second, I'm not achieving anything. But you can be in a room, <laughs> room full of people with just one individual who's so passionate and constantly encouraging and feel like, wow, I can take over the world now. I mean, I can take over the world now. Fail, fellowship makes us stronger. Secondly, fellowship provides encouragement. See, when we don't feel like doing it, fellowship will keep us accountable. Fellowship will keep us accountable. Fellowship provides encouragement. Thirdly, fellowship reminds us we're not alone. You might be looking at a circumstance this morning and you might be feeling a bit all alone. But I want to encourage you, church, you're not alone. You're not alone. God is with you. Most importantly, you've got a big family who's backing you, who's praying for you. Fellowship is important. And you know, one thing we always 
find, um, whenever we re read the accounts um, found in the Genesis, whenever Adam and Eve, they fell, what did they do? They were hiding from God. And we, we heard a wonderful message from Jen a couple of months ago about running away from God and about where we are in our spiritual journey from Jan. We heard it a couple of months ago. And it was, it's a challenge, and it's true to us to this very day as well. What started in Genesis still continues to this very day. Whenever we feel like we've messed up, we run away from people. Whenever we feel like we've messed up, we hide from people. And sometimes we hide from church because we feel like we've been exposed. We feel like the, the, the sin that we've been struggling with for such a long period of time is now exposed. And now nobody loves me anymore. And now I'm not part of the family anymore. Hey, whenever your son does something bad, does that mean he's not part of the family anymore? No, he's still your son. Whenever your husband says something to you that's hurtful, or the other way around. doesn't matter. See, love, love is always greater. Love is always greater. And whenever we're in fellowship, right, even when a certain individual might be hurting, we need to remember that we're one big family. And no family is perfect, you see, but we're there for one another. We're constantly encouraging one another. And fourthly, fellowship helps us grow in our walk with God. It helps us grow in our walk with God. So what Paul is saying here is from one loving fellowship to another loving fellowship in Galatia. Let's look at a different verse now. Verse 3. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the greetings Paul and his friends are sending comes in the form of typical Christian early blessings. This was a typical early Christian blessing, grace and peace. See, whenever we, we read um, Paul's letters, he usually always opens up with his greetings, grace and peace. Grace involves the giving and receiving of something that has the potential to bless both the giver as well as the receiver. That's grace. So when I'm showing grace to someone who's hurt me, or when I'm showing forgiveness to someone who hurt me, I'm giving them a gift as well as I'm receiving a gift myself. When I'm receiving a gift, I'm setting myself free because when we don't forgive people, there's this element of bitterness that lurks within our spirit. And, and if we're not careful, that bitterness will continue to eat us on the inside. And this morning, church, if you're holding on to that little bit of bitterness, I want to encourage you, it's time to show grace. It's time to show forgiveness. Not only are you setting that person free, but you are setting yourself free. It's time to set yourself free. It's time to let go. Amen? It's time to let go. And then it says peace. You see, it comes from the Hebrew word shalom, which speaks of not just outer kind of peace, but inner kind of peace. The peace that allows you to go to bed at night and sleep well. The peace that is so deep-rooted inside, if it doesn't matter whatever your outer circumstances, you still have this inner joy within you. That's peace. So when we show grace to people, we receive peace. And we will have this peace in us. So God's grace reaches out and produces peace. That's what he's saying, grace and peace. May the grace of God reach out to you and produce peace in you. That was the early greeting. Let's look at verse 6 and 7. I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are thrown into confusion and trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, Paul is getting to the root of this letter. He's getting to the point. He says, Galatians were going in a direction Paul never had imagined they'd go. Paul never imagined that they'd pursue this um, thing that they were pursuing. See, Paul is not only speaking to the Jewish believers in the church, but he's also speaking to Gentile believers in the church. So what was happening was there were two forms of believers, right? People who had Jewish roots, those who understood the Torah, those who understood the scriptures, but people who received the gospel and they were from Gentile roots. 
They didn't have the full um, understanding. They didn't understand the full heritage. So what Paul was now implementing was, doesn't matter if you're Jew, coming from a Jewish background or you're from a Gentile background, if you're in Christ, you are all one. And that was a big thing, guys. That was a big thing. Because Jewish, they were very prideful of their inheritance. They were very prideful of their heritage. We're God's chosen people. That, that was their prideful saying. We are chosen people. God chose us. Now, all of a sudden, Gentiles, they believe in Jesus. And now Paul is saying they too are chosen people. And Gentile and Jewish people are going, hold on a second. They don't come from our background. You see, and it's so easy to fall into that trap just because someone isn't worshipping like us, just because someone isn't speaking in tongues like us, just because someone isn't jumping around and worshipping God like us doesn't give us the right to say that they don't know Jesus. Amen? See, everyone has different way of worshipping Jesus. And us Pentecostals, I think sometimes we fall into that trap of just because someone doesn't speak in tongues and shouts around and dance around just like us, we so easily put on our judging hat on and we say, oh, do you even know Jesus? Perhaps that person is more righteous or more in love with God than we are. We don't know. And it's so easy for us to just um, look people on the outside and, 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 and form this judgment on how their lives might look like. But in reality, we don't really know much about that person. And so what Paul is actually saying here is, hey, you were running a good race. Who cut it in you? You were doing so well. What happened to you? Why all of a sudden now you've started judging people? Were you not saved by grace yourself? And now you slowly fall into that trap of following the law. And sometimes it's so easy for us to base our, uh, our religiousness, I don't know if that's a word, but base our, basing our, how holy we are on the basis of our performance, what we've done today. Does me reading my Bible make me any holier? Does me praying a lot and shouting a lot, does, does that make me any holier? No. It's not about what I've done, it's about what Jesus has done for us, amen? And we have to remember that message of the gospel church. This isn't about our performance. This isn't about our to-do list. This isn't about how many times I fast, how much I pray, how much I'm in my uh, prayer closet. This is about, do I believe in Jesus? This is about, do I know who Jesus is? This is about, uh, do I love him with everything that has got is inside of me? What did Jesus say to Peter? Peter, do you love me? He had to repeat it three times. On the third time, Jesus got him. Peter broke down in tears. Because Peter, all of his life, was trying to achieve righteousness and holiness on the basis of his performance, on the basis of his to-do lists. And church, I want to encourage you, if you've got your to-do list, please keep up with it. But what I'm also saying to you is do not base your relationship with Jesus on the basis of your to-do list. Maybe you've done your devotion this morning. I don't know. Maybe you haven't done your devotion this morning. It's good to continue with your devotion. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. All right? Please don't hear what I'm not saying. Please continue with the to-do list. Please continue to pray. Please continue to fast. Please continue to devote yourself in the scriptures. But what I'm also saying is please continue your relationship with Jesus. Please continue your relationship with Jesus. Verse 8 and verse 9, it says, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say it again. If anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Very heavy scripture there, isn't it? So basically what Paul was being accused was, the main reason why local Jewish communities were horrified and started labeling Paul as people pleaser was because they saw, because Paul wanted to please people, that's why he said everybody's included in the promises of God. That's, that was the message of God. And that was the message Paul was preaching. Listen, it doesn't matter whatever your background, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are part of his promise. His promises do apply to you in your life today. But there were also those who were saying, listen, if you're Gentile, you've got a different promise. If you're Jewish, you've got a different promise. That was a different gospel. So now what Paul is doing is Paul is accused of two things here, all right? Firstly, Paul is accused of disloyalty to Israel's heritage. He's accused of disloyalty to Israel's heritage. And secondly, he's accused of compromising by associating and fighting for Gentiles' 
That's crazy, isn't it? You see, Paul is declaring a message of the gospel in which Christ's death with sin launched the new creation, a new world, where now there is no Gentile, no Jews, no male or female, no rich or poor, but everyone is united as one body of Christ. That's what Paul was preaching. We are one body of Christ. You see, and I love how Paul deals with his accusers. Firstly, he turns it around and brings a biblical judgment. He turns it around and brings in a biblical judgment. See, if you're struggling with something, first place you should go is your Bible. Your Bible. Whenever we struggle, what do we do? We ring people, don't we? Ah, I'm really strong. But have you ever tried praying? Have you ever tried bringing it before God? So it's, it's a simple message. I don't know if you guys do a simple message, but this is a simple message. Bring it before God. What are you struggling with? Have you prayed about it? Have you brought it before God? You see, now I've learned it. Before, I, I, will, I believe in prayer. But most of the time, you know, I was, I was ringing people and I was saying, oh, you know, um, I'm, really, um, I'm, I'm really struggling with so-and-so. You know, um, can, you, can you please pray for me, you know, um, um, and, and, and bring all different things. But now what I've learned is I bring it before God. See, if, I, if I'm struggling with a situation, I bring it before God. If I'm struggling with a sickness, I bring it before God. If I'm struggling with something, I bring it before God. Because God is more than able to hear our prayers and answer our prayers. Amen? God is more than able. He's never let me down. He's never let me down. I look back and God's never let me down. So in verse 8, you see, he says, Even if we or angels should preach a gospel other than the one preached to um, us, let them be under God's curse. In other words, what Paul is saying is, God is the ultimate judge and I am accountable to him. God is the ultimate judge and I am accountable to him. God sees me. God sees us. Before even we say a word, he knows what we need. Before even we um, get on our knees and cry out to him, he sees us. He sees our hurt. He sees our struggle. He sees our sickness. He sees what we struggle with. On the outside, you see, we've, we've perfected the, mar the, the art of faking. We've perfected the art of pretense. We're so good at pretending. But you have to ask yourself this question. Are you, are you really okay? Am I really Okay. What is it in your life that you're struggling with right now? It's time to let go of that pretense and it's time to come before God. It's time to surrender. Sharon sent me a video um, a couple of days ago. And you know, funny enough, I was preparing a similar message. And I was preaching in church in Doncaster yesterday. Different message. And, um, and I was just praying to God, God, like, I prepared this message. Is this really something you want me to preach it to your people in Doncaster? And funny enough, the text message came through, exactly the same message. And I wasn't planning on sharing this this morning, but that word surrender is powerful. That surrender. See, we have to learn to surrender. That old ancient art of surrendering it all before God. We used to sing that hymn, didn't we? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender it all. What are you struggling with this morning? Church, stop hiding. Stop pretending. What, is, what are your struggles? God sees it. God knows you're hurting. God knows you're struggling. So why pretend? Bring it out. Bring it before God. We're going to have a little bit of prayer time after I finish this message. And I want to encourage you. Do you know what? I'm going to do the old school, old style this morning. I'm, I'm going to open up this altar after this message. And if you want prayer, I'm going to ask the leadership team to get ready as well. And please, let's, 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 let's receive from God this morning. Let's receive from God this morning. Verse 10. It says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to, trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Oh. I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it 
from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. See, Paul's integrity was challenged there. Paul's motives was challenged. His lifestyle and conviction was challenged. Even his message was challenged. And I love this verse, right? Verse 10. This is how Paul sees himself. He says, I am a slave of Christ, a servant of Christ. You see, he's, in other words, what he's saying is, I'm not in this for praises or approval of people. I'm not here to please people. That's, exactly, that's what he's saying. You see, he's saying, I'm not here to be popular. Because um, tough messages will not, make us, will not make you popular. Challenging people will not make you popular. And he says, he is in this because he is called by God himself. He's called by God himself. He's in this because he knows who he serves. He's in this because he knows he is commissioned and appointed by God. He's in this because he knows the will of God. He knows the will of God. He's in this because he knows God has called him. And church, my message to you this morning is this. Remember who called you this morning. It's God. God's called you. And he's not just called you to just, uh, just, just be comfortable and complacent in your journey with him. No, he's called you to make a difference in this world. You are the light of the world. You see, don't hide that light God has placed in you. It's time to rise up. It's time to act out and step out in boldness and be brave and be courageous. See, he summarizes three things in this verse. Firstly, his gospel was not merely human construction. Secondly, his gospel was not passed on to him or taught to him by any human and thirdly, he received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. He received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. The art of staying still in his presence and surrendering to God. See, when we stay still in his presence, we begin to hear from God. We begin to hear from God. See, most of the time we don't hear from God is because we're so distracted with lots of disruptive noises. But when we still ourselves and when we come before God, we hear from God. We hear from God. So what can we learn from all this? Firstly this, be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you listen to. What Paul is saying to the church here is, Galatians, please be careful who you listen to. And my message to you this morning is, shared for this community church, please be careful who you listen to. If you listen to negative noises, if you listen to fearful noises, next thing you know, hearing fearful noises will impart fear in your heart and in your spirit. If you hear a negative noise, it will impart negative voices in your spirit. But if you become intentional about listening to the word of God, if you become intentional about soaking in the word of God daily, it will produce faith in you. It will produce this um, passion within you where you will be empowered to tackle, the all, tackle all the negative noises that will try to, to invade your heart and your life. Be careful who you listen to. Secondly, always test what you hear. Be careful who you listen to. Always test what you hear. Always test what you hear. See, now I've learned the art of not actually believing everything I hear. Not believing everything I, I, I hear. It, it's so important. Because sometimes, you know, if we're not careful, you know, we just receive all this misinformation and, and before you know it, you know, we're, we're acting out in fear. Always test what you hear. And this also comes true when it comes to the prophetic as well. You see? Paul says times after time, test the spirit. In other words, what he's saying is test the prophecy. It's so important that we learn to test the words that we receive. Thirdly, what Paul is saying is pleasing God should be our main priority. Pleasing God should be our main priority. Am I running this race to please people? If I'm running this race to please people, then perhaps my job as the minister of the gospel is not fit for me. You see, because the gospel will offend people. The gospel will challenge people. But the gospel will also transform people. Amen? The gospel will also change lives. When I first heard the gospel, it was uncomfortable. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it because it, it made my lifestyle very uncomfortable. It challenged my lifestyle. 
But as I began to, began to submit myself, as I began to surrender to God, all of a sudden the gospel shaped my life and changed my life. And the message of the gospel is challenging, guys. And when you begin to share the message of the gospel to your loved ones, you're not going to be famous. But God's not called us to be famous. God's called us to be faithful. Are you choosing to be famous? Then perhaps the message of the gospel, <laughs> you can water it down, just, just preach the way you like it. But if you want to be faithful, you have to communicate the true message of the gospel. The true message of the gospel is you come to Jesus. Jesus will challenge you. Jesus will convict you. Holy Spirit will just <laughs> destroy you. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit will also build you. The Holy Spirit will also transform you. Holy Spirit will also heal you. Holy Spirit will also create a new heart within you and a new spirit within you. And lastly, be faithful to the gospel that God has entrusted you with. Be faithful to the gospel. Paul is saying to the Galatians, be faithful to the gospel. Which is, church, we are called to preach the truth. Preaching the truth will not make us famous, like I said earlier on. But we're called to be faithful, firstly, to God. Secondly, we're called to be faithful to his word. And thirdly, we're called to be faithful to his church. We're called to be faithful to God. We're called to be faithful to his word. We're called to be faithful to his church. Let's be faithful, amen? Let's be faithful to the end. Let's keep fighting the good fight of faith until one day we hear these beautiful words from Jesus himself. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen, praise God. Should we all stand, if we can, please? I'm going to ask Lorraine to play something in the background for us, if that's all right, Lorraine, please. We've heard the message this morning. And you know, I want to open up this altar to you, church, this morning, you know. I know time's running. But um, let's do some business with God this morning, amen. If you need healing this morning, I want to open up this altar to you. That's what we're going to pray for, firstly. If there's anybody in here this this moment, just now, and if, if you're struggling with something, if you're struggling with any form of sickness in your life, and you need healing, I want to open up this altar to you right now, and we're going to pray for you. Amen? We're going to pray for you. Come on, church, if that's you, I'm going to open up this altar to you right now. Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to ask Paul and Mark to help me with this, please. Jesus. Come on, church, we're a body of believers, I mean, if you feel like you want to surround these guys and you want to pray for them, please, you're more than welcome to do so. If you just want to stretch out your hands to them right now. Our God is a God of healing, amen. Our God is a God who is able. Spirit of living God, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you right now.
pray for us now, for each and every one of us. So, if you want to stretch your hands towards God right now, I want to pray for God's protection. I want to pray for God's provision. I want to pray for peace. I want to pray for joy. Maybe something's ha something has happened in your life and maybe you've lost that sense of peace. I want to pray for that. You know, and maybe something you were so joyful about in your life to do, maybe you lost, lost your joy and your passion. I want to pray for that as well. Jesus. Lord, we come before you, Lord. Lord, we stand in your holy presence. You know everything about us. There is nothing to hide. You see us. You know us. Yet you still choose to love us. So Lord, we bring all of our worries before you, all of our anxiety before you, all of our fear before you, Lord, and all of our needs before you. Lord, we ask of you, Lord, will you fill us with your peace? Lord, will you fill us with your joy? Lord, will, will you fill us, Lord, with your passion, Lord God? Lord, we bring our needs before you. You are our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are our healer, God, who heals. You're our Jehovah Shalom, Lord God, who fills us with peace. Lord, we pray for our loved ones, Lord God, those who don't know you yet. Lord, we pray, Lord God, for your divine intervention to take place, Lord God. Let them have that similar revelation, just like Paul did on his way to Damascus. Lord, you are, we know you are more than able. Lord, and we know you can do the impossible. So, Lord, we bring all of our impossible situations to you, Lord, and we ask of you, Lord God, to make it possible, Lord. Lord, we believe, but help us to deal with our unbelief. Lord, fill us right now, Lord, as we stand in your presence. Fill us, Lord. Fill us with your peace, Lord. Fill us with your spirit, oh God. Fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our closing song is going to be the blessing. And as Daniel's just said, we're going to speak to future generations. So we've all got young people within our, within our families. We want to speak that blessing over people. That in your coming and your going, we praise our God. And we pray that they, they will be influenced by the power of God in their lives. And Father, we thank you that your word has gone out from this place. And Lord, it will not return void have an effect upon people, it will have an effect upon us, and Lord we pray your blessing over each and every person in this building, and those that we come into contact with this week, in Jesus name, Amen. Before we start the song, I've got uh, an announcement, it's Edna's 97th birthday this week, 97, so we're, we're nearly there. I think we can mark Edna down as our oldest member. I think that's pretty safe to say. And also, out in the foyer, we have some eggs. Now, eggs are a symbol of new birth. 
and they are eggs for you to take out to your neighbors and your friends. A, they've been a gift to the food bank, but they're, they're coming up to their, their expiry date, so their expiry date is later this week. But please take them for yourselves, for your friends, for your neighbors, anybody. We've got loads, so please take them. Thank you. Right, okay, so we're going to sing the blessing, Daniel. Over to you. The Lord bless you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Your family and your children and the children and the children and his presence will be for you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you it's with you it's with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going your weeping Rejoicing is for you, 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 is for you. God have a fantastic week but before we do that I think we have to sing a happy birthday yeah. song to Edna eh? we have to do it so come on church on top of your voice we're going to sing birthday songs to Edna <laughs> one two three happy, happy birthday, birthday to you happy birthday to you God bless you. Praise God, church. Have a fantastic week. Please stay for some refreshments afterwards. God bless you. Amen. See you next week. <laughs>